Congratulations on your purchase of a Cessna 182 Pro Series 4-channel RC aircraft from Sharper Image. First thing we're going to do is do part identification and layout. To begin with, we're going to look at the fuselage. Second, we have our wing panel fully assembled with servos mounted. Third, we have the shock absorbing landing gear that just connects directly into the body. And we also have the nose wheel which just plugs right in under the front of the fuselage itself. We have a spare propeller. We have the vertical stabilizer and we're going to show you how to install that. We also included two extra quick links for the elevator and rudder and the two nylon bolts to hold your wing on. And the glue, but I don't think I'd recommend using that glue, I would use a two-part epoxy which I will show you. Horizontal stabilizer and what I want to show you here, this is kind of important. With the horizontal stabilizer, I want to make sure that you flex the elevator portion. So grab it right by the control horn, move it back and forth to free it up a little bit, flip it over, grab the other side, move it back and forth. This will ensure a smooth movement when the servo goes to operate the control horn. The next step will be making a small incision on the tail of the aircraft right where the horizontal stabilizer will be inserted. Take your X-Acto knife and make a gentle little cut. Then what you're going to do is after it's cut, gently lift it up just a little bit to make sure it moves smoothly because you're going to insert the horizontal stabilizer right in that slot. So let's go through this process. First off, as I stated earlier, I would highly recommend a five minute epoxy. It doesn't matter what brand you get. You can get it from your local hardware store or local hobby shop. But five minute epoxy, there's a process involved. You have to put equal parts of both the catalyst and the hardener. The next important procedure is you really want to make sure you mix it thoroughly. You should be mixing for at least 20 to 30 seconds of constant rotation and mixing. Once you've mixed it for 20 or 30 seconds, the epoxy is ready to, to be used. Now, follow these steps. It'll make it very easy for you. You really don't need that much epoxy and what you're going to do is coat the inside of the slot for the horizontal stabilizer. You're going to put epoxy on the bottom and you're going to put epoxy on the top area. So we'll just do that nice and easy. Lift it up, back and forth. The next procedure will be to put a little bit of the epoxy on the horizontal stabilizer itself. You don't want to put too much on or it'll seep all over the place and make a mess. So just take a little bit and put it dead center on the horizontal stabilizer on both sides and there's a little trick here I wanted you to uh, pay attention to. Sometimes we get so focused on a process we, uh, we forget the direction things need to be connected. So you could be all excited about putting the epoxy on the horizontal stabilizer and the next thing you know you have it in upside down. So I'm going to demonstrate for you uh, actually before you insert it you're all set to put it in. It has epoxy. You line it up. You're, you're good to go. But there's going to be one little problem that can occur sometimes. And, and I'll demonstrate this to you. Follow through the whole airplane. You notice that the control horn is up. That control horn has to be on the bottom. So you need to rotate 120 degrees. Make sure the control horn is on the right hand side on the bottom. Gently slide it in. Lower it down. And basically you're going to hold it for about four or five minutes. The styrofoam itself will help generate heat and that will cure the epoxy. Make sure that it is square. Make sure that it's at a right angle to the rudder line, which is my thumb is pointing to. Now, once that's complete, we want to just make sure that the elevator is working smoothly, up and down, no problems whatsoever. And the next process we're going to do is um, we're going to hook up the rudder itself. I was just pointing to where the control horn connects to the elevator. We'll look at that in a moment. Right now, let's do the elevator. Same process. We're going to take the rudder, move it back and forth to make sure it moves smoothly. Um, we're then going to pre-set it in without epoxy and just make sure it fits nice and smooth. Uh, but as you notice, it's not square. We have to make sure when we epoxy it that we get it perpendicular or square to the horizontal stabilizer. So, let's go over this process again. We're going to take our five minute epoxy and we're going to make equal lengths of both A and B, the catalyst and the hardener. 
Normal procedures, you put the catalyst down first and the hardener second. Usually the hardener is indicated on a red cap and the catalyst is on the uh, black cap itself. Again, we're going to mix it up thoroughly and this time we'll be mixing for about uh, you know 30 seconds or so. Once it's good to go, we're going to put some of the epoxy inside the slot in the body itself and we're going to then just paste the epoxy on both sides of the horizontal stabilizer. Now I'm purposely taking a little bit of extra time here to show you this because I, I want to make sure that you thoroughly apply the epoxy to the vertical stabilizer. So make sure you put a coating on both sides and uh, if you do this you'll have a, a secure bond and it'll work out very well. Okay, once the epoxy has been uh, put on that vertical stabilizer and you verify that the rudder is moving back and forth nice and smooth we're going to go ahead and mount it onto the airplane itself. So, follow this next procedure. Insert it into the slot. Firmly push it all the way down. Make sure it's secure. And then what we need to do is align it so that when we look at it, the right side and the left side have an equal distance. You can use a, a square, you can use a uh, measuring ruler, whatever you'd like to use. But once it's cured, you want to make sure that it's square, as we show right here. We verify everything works nice and smooth, and we're good for our next step. This next procedure, we're going to put the landing gear on. It is very simple. Take the corner of the landing gear and insert it into the plastic slot in the bottom. Then all you're going to do is slide it across and it'll snap in. So we slide across, line it up on both sides, and we give one good firm push. Here a little click, and it, then it's locked in. And we're going to repeat the same process for the nose wheel. So just make sure it's nice and secure, and the main landing gear is in. Our next procedure is going to put the nose wheel on. This is not a steerable nose wheel, but what you will notice when you go to fly the aircraft, just a little bit of up elevator on the ground will allow you to steer it left and right. This does not require a steerable nose wheel. So here's the slot again. We're going to put it on a little bit of an angle, and we're just going to slide that nose wheel in with a little push and a click, and now we have our landing gear all set to go. So at this point, we have the horizontal and vertical stabilizer in. We're going to now show how to hook up the quick link connectors to the uh, or servo arm servos. You can turn it either clockwise or counterclockwise to adjust it. As it comes from the factory, the servos are pretty much neutral, so just go ahead and we're going to make our connections. And then later on, we're going to turn the transmitter on and the receiver on, and we'll see if we have to make any minor adjustments. But what I'm demonstrating here is if you have to turn it in or out, you can do that and then hook it up to the actual horn itself. A good rule of thumb, there are three holes on the servo arms, three holes on the uh, arm itself on the rudder and elevator. I use the middle hole. That gives a nice amount of movement. If you were to uh, move it in or move it out, you'll increase or decrease the throw. And we'll, we'll demonstrate that later. Now we're looking at the elevator. Again, it's kind of short, so we're going to turn it counterclockwise, basically unthreading it, and it make it longer so that it'll connect to the horn itself. And again, we're going to be connecting it to the middle hole on the horn coming off of the elevator. And that elevator is connected to the horizontal stabilizer. So we just continue to adjust it till we get it pretty much level. We're going to push it through and a little snap, and it's connected. So now we have our elevator and our rudder are all set to go. In this step, we're going to be taking a look at the inside of the aircraft. Here, we have our receiver and a wire that will connect to our aileron servo. This is a very simple process, and if you follow these steps, you'll, I'll guarantee you that everything will work smooth. First off, we want to make sure that the connectors are firmly pushed together. And we want to also verify that they're connected properly from the factory, and that when you connect it, you connect it properly. So let's look at these connectors. You'll notice that the white goes to the white on either side. So when the connectors are joined together, white to white, 
and black to black and that should be the same on both Eleron servos. They are connecting into a Y connector that's going to connect into your receiver. Our next process will be to take the Y connector lead which is, uh, I'll demonstrate here in just a second. We're going to take this connector and follow the same process. We're going to connect it to the Eleron lead that's going to go into the receiver and we're going to verify it's white to white and black to black. Basically the assembly is pretty much complete. Um, at this point what we're going to do is now set the wing into the wing saddle. We're going to push it forward, push down firmly on the back, and it fits a very tight, very snug fit. So once we push it in, we're then going to take the nylon screws and we're going to bring them all the way down so it fits nice and tight. Again, a side note, make sure that on either side of the wing that there's no wire sticking out of the bottom. Make sure all wires are inside the fuselage when you're screwing down the wing bolts. So it's the same process. Again, don't over tighten them. Bring them down so they're nice and snug. Never put too much torque on them. Never over tighten them. And basically your airplane is complete at this point. This next procedure is very important. My hand is pointing to the left stick and that's the throttle. That's also the rudder control for left and right. Elevators on the right, ailerons are back and forth. I'm pointing to the trim tabs. They all need to be centered and we have an adjustable antenna that can rotate 180 degrees either direction. So let's go through this process. First, always turn the transmitter on. Second, verify that that throttle is all the way down. We don't want that engine to start prematurely. Now we're going to open up the bay that's going to house the battery itself. So we open up the plastic door and we're going to connect our Dean connector. Here's a neat little trick. Look at the Dean connector and see where the slots are. So when you go to connect it, you know which way you're going to have to push the connector. And if you follow this process by looking at it, it connects very easily. There's not a problem fighting it at all. We're going to push the wires forward towards the nose of the aircraft. There's a slot in there all the wires can go into. And then we're just going to gingerly and lightly press the battery into its compartment. Slide the tray over and connect the two little plastic hooks. That will seal the door. The door now will be shut. Okay, now that we've turned the plane over, we're going to look at the control surfaces in relationship to the transmitter. On the right hand stick is the elevator up and down and your ailerons for left and right. And it's important that we get their direction correct, so let's just slow down for a minute and take a look at this. If I move the stick to all the way to the right, the left aileron goes down. So that's important to look at. Left stick is your rudder, left and right, that should follow back and forth, and your throttle. Do not move that throttle unless the prop is clear of people and obstruction. So move the throttle back and forth if you verify that there's nothing in front of that propeller. Okay, let's take a look at how we're going to shut this airplane down, how we de-energize or remove the battery. Remember, the transmitter is always the first thing on and the last thing off. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and we're going to open up the battery box, number one. So we open up the two twist connectors, remove the battery from the battery box itself, and as we pull it out, what we're going to do is remove the Dean connector, disconnect the Dean connector. Set your battery down, then shut your transmitter off. Again, transmitter first thing on, last thing off. Turn the plane over, and now we're ready to charge that battery if we need to. What I'd like to do is focus a little bit on those control surfaces we talked about earlier. I told you there were three horns. I told you to connect it to the center horn. On this elevator, if you move it up, you get less throw. If you move it down, you get more throw. Let's look at the aileron servo itself. With the aileron servo, there's also two to three holes. On an aileron servo, if you move it up, you'll get more throw. If you move it down, you get less throw. So like I said, it's very good to have all the connectors on the middle horns, both on the servo arm and also on the horn itself on the ailerons, which is in the center connector. This will give you a nice mild throw and the airplane will fly very smooth. So this is something I highly, highly recommend. Congratulations, you have completed the assembly and the alignment of your Cessna 182 Pro Series from Sharper Image.